Hey, how's it going? Oh my goodness gracious. So folks, uh, get some admin out of the way really quick. I have a few auctions ending. A whole bunch of stuff has ended uh, this morning and uh, just so many knives have gone out the door. It's just been a pretty exciting morning. This is Saturday morning. We are enjoying our coffee. Beautiful day outside. Uh, that was a picture of me sitting outside enjoying the nice sunny weather that we have just before this video launched. So the video, the knives that are ending relatively soon is this case, beautiful knife, great walk and talk. These are in my eBay listings right now. Um, one thing about eBay, you can't really, you really don't know what you're getting. Walk and talk, listen guys. These are great knives, okay? Um, it has a little surface corrosion. So what does that mean? Um, most, People on eBay would remove this. I'm not going to. It's, it's not. It's stable. There's nothing wrong with it because the rest of the knife has a really good polish, so I'm leaving it as is. Unused knife, beautiful. Another one that's about to end really quickly is a large trapper. What is a large trapper? I'm going to show you. This is large. And there we go. Here's even smaller. Okay, it's slightly bigger, okay? See that? All right, the master blade is slightly bigger too. See the tang's a little bit uh, larger and then also a little bit larger of a blade. All right, this is uh, about to end in, let me see here. It's at $44 right now. It's got seven bids, 13 watchers, 132 views. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate that. And then we have this at $44, and it's at four hours left. I suspect this will go for around $56, maybe possibly $60. These are factory seconds, but they're uncirculated. They got a little love from me, so they're incredibly soft and creamy and beautiful. It's basically like having a knife worker just polish these gorgeous things up. They're really one of a kind. This one has some micro cracking on one of the shields. That's it, guys. Other than that, it's a perfect knife. Uh, these were gorgeous, all cow bone handles. Very rare for a very large four and one eighth inch large trapper. And that's gonna be ending here really soon. And I see, oh, I see someone just joined. Thank you very much. Uh, great. You're already going to my eBay. Yes, I can see when you guys are going to all kinds of things. It's fantastic. Everything's kind of connected. eBay, Facebook, YouTube. And it's a great way for me to bring you guys um, to my knives because if you know what you're buying, the problem with eBay is you don't really know. So for instance, I'll show you something. I could just list this knife. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Matter of fact, it looks a lot better than maybe one with some micro cracking, you know, something I can't hide. Can't hide the micro cracking from you guys, right? But I could hide maybe. Hmm. Kind of a soft closer. Okay, that's the problem with eBay. If, if you can't trust the guy, he's not gonna mention this. So I'm gonna tell you the good, and I'm gonna have a good sales pitch for this. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of a kind, and the way the cow bones laid on this, you're not gonna find another one like this. So I'm gonna have a good sales pitch for the good, but I'm also gonna tell you the bad, all right? And I'm gonna let you guys decide what you like about it. You can always come to my eBay listings, and I'll always kind of throw those out. I had a question on the single blade um, trapper with the liner lock that I have for sale on eBay. Look guys, I have no bids on this. I don't understand this. I have five watchers, 115 views. This is a beautiful knife. It's perfectly adjusted. Hello, look at that. It's a gorgeous knife. It has one problem. It's got a crack right here. Check this out, this crack right here. Could that crack be an issue? If you drop the knife, right on that area, it could be an issue. And I put that in the listing. 
So it is a rather, it's not micro cracking, it is a crack, but it's stable, it is not moving, it doesn't move when you move the knife or put it under tension or pressure or anything like that. It doesn't go all the way through, it's not going anywhere. I don't think it will ever become an issue. Now if it was my knife, I'd throw a little super glue in there, kind of blow it in there, kind of rub it on in, and then i just kind of buff it out, okay? Um, and it would never be an issue, all right? So this is a gorgeous knife. Look at this liner lock. Look how it locks out, so cool. Look at that, it's a locking back pocket knife. Look at that, just beautiful, sexy slicing blade. You know, it is a lot better than carrying. I do carry a Swiss Army knife. This is my knife, but I really, you know, I'm working on my house and stuff, and I always need a screwdriver at all times, but look at the difference between the, I mean, this looks like, like a Pinto or something. A big difference, come on. Those are 20 bucks, guys. Right now, this is a 22 on my eBay listing. It's gonna, it's gonna end here in three hours and 27 minutes. You know, my, I might have spelled something wrong, so it might be your benefit to get on there and just give it a bid. Give it a bid for $23, $24. You might, you might get a dream bid on it. How about that? Okay, that's all I'm asking you guys to do. Throw a dream bid on there for me. Get the, get the bidding process started. Go down below this video, click on that link, and just bid on a few things. Throw a few dream prices on stuff, and I'll be happy to send it to you, okay? All right, and let me know that you actually responded to this and did that. I might throw in a free gift. The last guy that did that, I threw in a free Swiss Army knife. Hello. So you just gotta communicate with me. I love communication. Ah, MVC, that is my church that I go to. Great church, it's in San Gabriel. It's an international, like Japanese and American church. So it's, it's for international couples and the Japanese population. So it's, it's really great. So there's a bunch of guys like me and there's a bunch of guys like my wife. So I have these beautiful knives that are about to go up for sale. What do we have? So the liner lock one is going. The one with micro cracking is going. And what else is going? Oh, and we also have, that's going. My case is going. These, I do have a large sod buster with one crack. It's stable. It's all right. Soft closer, closer though. You could probably get this for like 20 bucks, guys. It's beautiful. Check this out. You guys want something that has not been sharpened? The, this, this knife right here is perfect in every way, except it missed the grinder. All you need to do is take it to a stone and put a nice edge or leave it as a display model. It's a gorgeous knife. Isn't that nifty? It's kind of cool. Check out this queen. Isn't that interesting? Got a liner lock there. Look at that blue. Isn't that blue pretty? Look at that. You gotta tell me that these knives, they really did a good job on the handles. It's really nice. This one's etched, and this one actually has a queen uh, shield and then also a queen. Isn't that nice? Just beautiful. Now the liner lock is a little bit about out of adjustment, so I'll have to note that on the eBay listing. But these blades are a little bit thinner. Just a really pretty knife. Oh, and we do have two models that are absolutely perfect. You guys already know what the blades look like. Look at the bone handles on this beautiful red. Now this one is absolutely perfectly adjusted. And these are the extra large trappers. Four, almost four and a half inches long. Just an amazing, deep, red, smooth, 
gorgeous red scales. You gotta love that. Just nice. This one is pretty cool. Um, this one kind of looks like the darker one that I have for sale, but it's it's actually a little bit nicer looking. Um, this one, um, well, in my opinion, this one has like translucent bone handle scales. It's so cool looking. Just, and it's a full size trapper also. Just neat. All right, and that's it. That's the admin. That's it, I'm here. You guys can chat to me, talk to me if you like. I'm gonna burn a little bit of time. Maybe somebody else will come online. I'm gonna clean up while I'm cleaning up. You guys can. Uh... So how do I ship my knives? You guys ask. Well, I do. I do put some extra stuff in there sometimes. Um, I also like to, uh, you know, make the packaging nice, you know, personalize it. So, yeah. Um. You know, everybody's a little bit different. Like if I'm sitting on first class or whatever, I'll stamp them with my first class sticker, with my little thank you for you. Um. This is this knife is still there. This is uh, this is the one that's made in Ireland. This is that coast trapper I was telling you guys about. Now this is more of a stamped knife. A lot of people like these. They really are built well. It's really these are really nice knives because they're they're one material, usually steel, and they're just uh, they're really cheap to make and they're really well made, um, and they are made to be hard use knives. Good stuff. Be something that you get right next to the cash register, you know. Um, this this one's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Schrade. This was made by Schrade Walden. I found out, and this is a Sabre USA. These knives should sell for a lot more than they do, but they just don't. Just beautiful. The fit, oh, just the way this knife feels, is so gorgeous. Yeah, if I don't get what I'm asking for, I'm just going to pull the listing and add it to my collection. It really is actually pretty nice. I might just buy that right now myself. I'll buy it from myself. I think so. That's a really nice knife. Yeah, I think I'm going to. I'm gonna pull that list in right now. See, I, the addiction is real, guys. The addiction is real. Uh, end listing, I'm keeping the sucker. Sorry, guys. And, and that's the thing, that's what I always tell you guys. Sometimes my knives are just too good of a deal and I start looking at them and I'm like, wow. Um, well, it's gonna make me re-sign in. But yeah. All right, then you guys got 10 minutes to get on there and get this knife real quick if you want. All right, I'll give you guys, I'll give the two people that are watching right now, if you wanna to go to my eBay listing and purchase this knife, it's the uh, Rare Vintage USA Monarch 201 Trapper. It's $37.95, well worth it, incredible. After I log off with you guys, I'm gonna utilize my phone and I'm gonna pull this listing. So solid. Just really well made. Yeah, I gotta keep that. That's mine, guys. Might even keep one of these red trappers. So if you guys see this, I'm gonna probably put these at a buy it now price. So you guys wanna remember these, okay? Oop, wrong way. I wanna show off that. Uh, yeah, these are gorgeous. Look at, that, look at those translucent bone handles there. Just gorgeous. 
And these knives are really perfect right now. Boys are nice. Real nice. Nice walk and talk. Just a beauty. Bop, bop. Ba -da -bop. Cool. Yeah, I'm pull that list and save me a bag anyway. Everybody keeps trying to negotiate, you know, though. You know, sometimes knives are just, they're just not uh, justifiably priced. And that's because people don't know about them. Um, or there was a lot of them made. And just because something, there was a lot of something made doesn't mean that a lot of good something was made. Um, you know, so... I don't know. If, if, if there's a good knife and someone you know tells you it's a good knife, you might want to check it out. Yeah, those are gorgeous. Just beautiful. And then the rest I have there are some tactical knives that... Um... <clears throat> hey, it's Justina. Hey, what's up? Yeah, what was up with those knife fights that you sent me? Indian knife fights. That was crazy. Those guys were nuts. Are you into she -mails? No, no, not at all. Yeah, I know. They were uh, like using a knife. It didn't. It wasn't a real knife. It looked like it was. I had some colored stuff on it. And they're like stabbing each other. I'm like, dude, get out of here, man. Yeah, I've got one knife like like that right now. And that Check out that beauty. And I was part of the sales team that helped work the kinks out for this. I didn't do much. Um, I was just part of um, I did actually a YouTube video for the company though and they gave me four knives one of which is in my collection and then this one I'm selling but what makes this knife really special is easy EV, easy grips I'm gonna say it wrong anyway the company that makes the grips for this also makes grips for uh, gun handles and check it out it's real grippy I can't really describe it how it feels but it's kind of like rounded and it's G10. So it kind of has like a, a weird swell. Look at that weird swell it has. I can compare it to my big head, you know? So it's not like, it's not like normally like, um, most scales that are G10, they're just flat. So when you hold it, it kind of, it doesn't really, it's not a real handle. G10 is, you know, good looking, uh, durable, lightweight, um, but it's not really necessarily as comfortable as a wood handle or something else that's, that would fill your hand, you know. But this company, the way their grinding machine works, they have that raised bevel. So it's like a, and it's actually in the center, you can see it's, it kind of goes up the whole way. And it really feels good in your hand. Um, just a great knife. This one has a gold etch too. And it's, I'm selling this one, it's brand new. I'm selling it for about $20 less than everyone else. There's a few other people that are pretty close to my price range, but I didn't see one with this color combination, which I think is totally cool. Check it out, you're like wearing some tactical gloves. You know, put on some tactical gloves, run through the backyard, freak out your neighbor. That's what you wanna do, man, especially in California. It keeps people at arm's distance. I'm just joking, of course. But I got these gloves in Korea. One of those active duty. And look at those. You know, isn't that knife awesome or what? So like if you guys wanted to like outfit your, your tactical gear, you always want some good gloves. You always want some good leather gloves. And then also you want the fire. These are like fire, like level three three or something they are really fire resistant these gloves were rather expensive i got these on base 
they look pretty cool. But I use these gloves actually to show how big a knife is and the fact that you can utilize it with gloves really good, you know. And it's just such a comfortable knife. Isn't that cool? And what I also liked about it is I helped develop the sheath because I, was, I worked in a helo, helo, helo squatter and I did a lot of like the um, sharpening and adjustments for some of their tactical gear just because it wasn't really my job, but I, I, I was really good at it. So one thing the air crew really liked was something that was flat. I, I know on my shirt, there you go, compared to my head. My head is just such a great backdrop. Um, so you see how skinny that is. That's pretty sweet, right? And then it's like this really heavy Gore-Tex and then it's got this indestructible interior so you never stab yourself. Cause the last thing you want to do, right? Is like stab yourself, especially if it's, you know, mounted on your, your chest or your vest or a lot of times, I'm telling you honest, they put it in their bag or they put it in their, they want this thing covered really, really well. Cause they won't be using their their fixed blade a lot. What they like to use is usually like their Spyderco Endura or something. It's usually something that's completely water, like salt water proof and it's something really, you know. Anyway, um, so it's got this really cool flat thing. It kind of goes in like that. And it buttons up, watch how easy this is. Just like that, you know, not fumbling. You don't want to be, you don't want anything. You want a good sheath system. Now what this has is more of an advanced button. It's got like a metal tab that keeps that up, right? So if you need your knife, it'd probably be mounted whatever way you want. You kind of just flip it. You see what I'm saying? It's really, it doesn't look like much, but it works. And, and that's what you want. So uh, I think that most air crew would approve. Some people want a little bit more. You can always go to the military expo in Norfolk, which is right by base, and you can get anything made out of um, uh, Kydex or anything customized for yourself if you want that. And, and if you wanted to do that, you would talk to your uh, the person that manages your air crew equipment and then go right down the street and, and do a few of those things for you and get anything customized. You can also talk to a company like Alpha One Source, which was my last company I worked for. Great company. And they can customize any gear for you. So you could tell them, I want this knife and I want it customizable for this type of equipment. And we'll have our guys manufacture it at a large scale so you guys can afford it. And then we'll get that stuff for you. So that's what I kind of liked about working for Alpha One Source is because when it came to tactical gear like that, which I was really familiar with, that was kind of cool to sell. I really enjoyed that stuff. Some stuff I was totally unfamiliar with and like working for any company, it didn't allow me time to help my mom. I can't help my mom when I'm working for a company like that, unfortunately, or build a house. But the good thing about helping mom is I can actually build a house. So this one actually comes with um, the box. Great knife, great knife. These I actually got a bid on and these are really cool. These are old Schrade uh, affordable tactical folders. And these are about 25 years old and they are really cool. Um, they don't look like much, but they're made in USA. So for you younger folks, maybe even people of my generation uh, that don't know any better, eh, it's usually about the 30 year, you know, cause, cause we remember stuff that was made in America, right? Like we go and we're like, oh, it's made in America and you'd buy it, right? It's pretty hard to see that now. It's starting to trickle back almost every company, Buck, um, SOG, Schrade, they all have a cheap American option. Um, almost all of them have a Chinese option also. The Chinese option though, in a lot of cases, it, they will take their more crazy designs, maybe their designs that would possibly cost more to manufacture, and they would actually have China produce those. 
So if you had a knife system that maybe had a, a fork with it or something like, whoa, that's kind of cool. It's usually Chinese. So it's something that, that's, that would probably be too expensive to manufacture, manufacture in America. And if it sells, sells well, maybe it's, what do they got to lose? You know, because there has to be a niche. Like, what is my niche? Well, my niche is selling things that are no longer made anymore. And I tried to express the value of those two people. I guarantee this is worth $20, okay? It's neat, it's got some nice feel to it, and it would have a feeling and a function that you're not used to, okay? So you, you'd, there would be something about it. You'd be like, you know, there's something, there's a firmness to this. There's a working order to it. Um, even though it is on the cheaper side back in those days, um, it's still gonna feel a lot more substantial than you're expecting. And that's, and that's the, the declining quality that I try to talk about, okay? The declining quality that we have accepted. You know, the first time I went to Australia, I went scuba diving and I, it was beautiful. I, 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 I loved it. And then the second time I went, the same place that we went scuba diving, the coral reef actually was dying. And I, it was because of the soot in the water. So we really, so I, if I, I actually said that looks horrible, but right on the other side of the bay, it was still okay. So in general, both times I scuba dived, it was the most gorgeous place I've ever seen in my entire life. But it's the declining scale. My perspective was a lot different than maybe a few of my guys that have never been there before. Okay, my perspective was, it's not as pretty as it used to be. That's a problem. Okay, so when it comes to some types of manufacturing processes or what you expect um, out of a knife, all right, it's not only price. Sometimes it's stuff that you don't even know about when a really good company might have made a knife that you just don't even know about. And you're like, Man, this is a really nice knife. Why doesn't everybody else know about this? Well, it's because, well, they don't know. There's a lot of stuff that was manufactured out there. A lot. A lot of knife brands. Knives were very popular. Pocket knives were in every single, every single man's pocket. And you needed that. So in turn, there's just tons of companies out there. And tons of unknown companies and some that were just really small and just developing, and they made some incredible knives that really nobody knows about. And that's my job. I, take, I find these knives for you guys, and I tell you, hey, it might be only $8, but it's, it's an incredible knife. It's gonna have you know, a snappiness to it that you're not expecting, you know? Um, and that's because it's older. It's, Maybe people were stronger back then. Were people stronger? Maybe they just worked harder? I don't know. Maybe they expected their knives to actually work. So that's called walk and talk for non-knife people. The walk and talk of a knife is how it sounds, how it operates, and there's nothing worse than looking at a gorgeous knife on eBay and finally getting it and opening it up and saying, ooh, that doesn't make me feel good. And you just feel like you got taken. You don't even wanna look at that knife. You almost wanna, you wanna complain, but you don't wanna be that guy. Or you should have read the description better. And you know, and it's like, you just kind of throw it in a plastic bag and it goes in the drawer as, whoops, one of those mistakes. So yeah, you don't want a knife that makes you feel bad. So this is a great knife too. I love my knives. And uh, that's it. Ooh, I, I actually sold some Strider knives. Can you guys believe that? Uh, two Strider knives. I was gonna actually do a YouTube video on them for you guys, because they're incredible knives. They've already been shipped out. The minute I listed them, they were gone. Um, I didn't even have time. I was just about to go live and talk about those particular knives. And lo and behold, yeah, they were not there. We are going to take a look at one incredible knife. I told you guys I'd do that if you guys stuck around. All right. 
So you guys know that my job was to tell you guys which knives to buy. And I remember when I started my YouTube collection, uh, YouTube channel, I told you guys to go out and I told you guys about a little company called Great Eastern Cutlery Company. I told you guys to go out and purchase as many of those knives as, as you could possibly afford. Well, because, you know, knives are an investment, all right? Your collection is an investment. You don't want to be one of those guys, hey, what, what, what do you collect? I collect DVDs. Do people still do that? You know, come on. You want a collection that obtains value, you want a collection that, that, that makes you wealth, and maybe something that you gain a little knowledge. Well, Great Eastern Cutlery Company, I went out and I actually just, I went out to the Open House Festival. It was one of their first open houses, and I bought every single knife in the case. The guys behind me hated me. This is a beautiful blue bone number 23 liner lock open house knife. I believe it's a number number 10. The video is really not going to do this justice. If you, It's got a deep, deep blue. And in order to see that blue, you need to have some light on it, you know, like this right there. And it has this deep blue. Now, when it's against my blue shirt, you can kind of see that it's not a black. It is a blue, in fact. And it is absolutely gorgeous. What does this shield say? Uh, to, to wet, to wet, to wet. All right. But anyway, um, that's what it is. Isn't that just beautiful? So I got these knives, I think, for $50 a piece. That's when they first came out. This knife right now currently is in the $400 range. And anybody that actually watched my videos and listened to what I actually had to put out also has a bunch of these. I actually purchased a bunch of these for an individual and he complained, hello. He was like, you picked the best ones. And I'm like, no shit, I bought the whole case and I'm gonna pick the favorite ones out of that case. I didn't make them, okay? You told me to buy you some. I bought the whole case. The guy was nice, but anyway, you know, you know how people are. They always got to complain about something, even when you do them an incredible favor. Drive across four states, pick up 15 knives for the guy out of the case from the GEC factory. This is not ordering online, and I take them from there and I send them to him, and he wants to complain. Man, are you serious? Anyway, sometimes you just can't make people happy. But anyway, we kiss and made up. He was like, he, he wrote back. I was like, hey man, think about what you're saying and contact me in 24 hours. 24 hours, he's like, dude, I was totally out of line. I'm sorry. But still, and that's and that's why you always want to give yourself 24 hours in life. Now, I want to be really careful with this knife. It's so gorgeous. And it has a liner lock, so it is actually a, a locking blade. See, you got that little... Right, And then you also have a half stop, which enables this to be a one-handed operation knife, if you wish. This one also has an etch to it, and they're just razor sharp. And now what makes these knives special is I actually went on a Great Eastern Cutlery um, tour. I met Christine. I got to talk to the guys. It was a one-on-one -on -one tour. My wife was there at the time. She was pregnant the first time we went. The next time we went, my daughter, I think, was two. And then the next time after that, she was like four or six. So we go there. My, they, they've watched my little girl grow up. Um, but these knives are made the old way. So they were stamped and punched out with the old tools from just, we're talking old knife companies. And they just, oh man, they just feel incredible, beautiful knives. I can't even tell you how nice this knife is. It's just incredible. And that's how I got it for $50. Yeah, guys. Now, this was a few years ago, quite a few years ago. So let me think, let me say it here. So this is a 235108. This was in 2008. Okay, so in 2008, I was screaming at the top of my lungs telling you guys to go out and buy these. A lot of people listened. A lot of people listened. All right, one more of my special knives. Now, they also made smaller knives. A lot of people are like, that's a big knife. I'm never going to carry that. They had the very popular 73 pattern. And these are incredible. This one is a stag. Is 
Is that gorgeous or what? And I was screaming, guys, as I go by these things. Just beautiful. Liner locks, very hard to get these now. Now it's really tight right now, let's see. I'm not gonna do it, I don't cut myself. But you still have that half stop, which, you know, it's adjusted nicely. Just gorgeous. Isn't that nice? That's just so nice. All right, guys. I'm out of here. This is my dad's Bowie knife. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, those were some of the special knives I promised you guys. Thank you for the ones of you, the, the guys and folks, young ladies, young gentlemen that stuck around and waited. And I will do that once again. The next ones I will go through are the non-liner lock GEC knives. And they are incredible. Thank you, Justina. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you, thank you. And that's why, boom. Thank you, by the way. And that's why I collect knives, because they're really, really beautiful. And here's one for the ladies. That's abalone. These are just gorgeous. Ooh, it's so cold. Yeah, abalone is really chill. It's really, it's like pearl. Just beautiful. So nice. Boy, you pull that thing out of your pocket, man. That'd just be like, boom. All right, take care. See y'all later.